I got married, I watched my wife walk down the aisle, and it was one of the most amazing experiences I think I've ever had. I'm 61, I've been married for 41 years, and I still remember what she looked like coming down that aisle. That's how big of an impression that this, the ladies make to us men. It is an amazing thing. I'd like to talk a little bit about what it means. Now, Marco and Sheila are Latter-day Saints. I'd like to tell everybody a little bit of what it means to be married to a Latter-day Saint. Latter-day Saints believe that marriage is not just for this earth, but they believe that it's forever. And when we are married by the laws of the land, then we believe that marriage ends at, the, at death. And that's whether you're a Latter-day Saint or not a Latter-day Saint. So what we look forward to is what we call being married or sealed in the temple. The reason that we look forward to that is because we are being married by a law that comes from heaven. And when you're married by a law that comes from heaven, then your marriage lasts beyond the grave and you stay married for the rest of eternity. That is what we look forward to as a Latter-day Saint. Now I know that Marco and Sheila have not yet gone through the temple, but I know they're, they're working for it and they're looking forward to the day. I'd like to tell you a little bit about uh, Latter-day Saints do not have the typical marriage vows that you hear in weddings. The reason for that is that for a Latter-day Saint, the vow that we give to each other is really the vow, the same vows that we give to every human being of the kind of loyalty and love and caring that we should give to each other. In a marriage, you get to share a special kind of relationship, but the vow itself is the same. It's a commitment to love, to care for, to respect, to show appreciation, and that's what the Lord asks us to do for everyone. Now, we received a little bit of instructions on how we should do that. The Lord taught us in the scriptures that when we become a friend and we become a husband or a wife to someone, that we should do that in a determination that is fixed, immovable, and unchangeable. Now, that's hard for a human being make, to make a promise like that. So I'd like to talk a little bit about how that's possible to do. The way that it ex is explained to us in the scriptures is that if we are willing to look beyond each other's weaknesses and not pay so much attention to them, but stay focused on the things that we like about the person, it is possible to forget the need to have bad feelings. Imagine how a marriage relationship could be if we didn't have bad feelings towards each other, ever. What a gift and a blessing that we would give to each other a special atmosphere, an atmosphere of comfort, an atmosphere of peace, an atmosphere where love could be fostered and built and strengthened in every way. Love is more than just the emotion of wanting to be together. Love is the commitment of loyalty, the commitment of uh, no matter what kind of situation that you find yourselves in, you're going to be true and an everlasting friend as well as a, per a companion for the marriage experience. This is what we strive for in our marriage relationships. So, I bring these things to your attention so that you can remember as you're exchanging the rings that you're not just becoming husband and wife by the exchange of those rings and, and uh, the ceremony of it, but you are committing to each other to be a friend and a loyal husband and a loyal wife in everything that is expected of a wife from a husband and everything that is expected of a wife. Did I say that wrong? I did. Anyway, back and forth. <clears throat> I said that wrong. When we remember that, 
and if we will remember that. And the truth is, the covenant that we make when we first come together is really that covenant. I'm going to give you myself and I'm going to receive you. We both give that to each other with the covenant that we're going to be happy for the rest of our life together and for a Latter-day Saint for the rest of eternity. We can only achieve that kind of happiness when we remember that we made a covenant that I'm going to be your friend and your husband and your or your wife forever and you work towards building that that sense of peace that sense of togetherness that sense of uni unity and harmony harmony is the hard thing to find when you have differences and the way you find that harmony and peace is by not paying so much attention to the weaknesses that doesn't mean that you don't teach each other we do teach each other because the things my wife taught me for the last 30 year, 41 years have been invaluable to me. I have become a much better man by my wife helping me to see things that I could never see like before. It's the same thing with you, Marco. I am positive if my wife was here, she could say the things that she learned by living with me has been amazing. So we get into it. I'm going to repeat it again so you don't forget with a, de a determination that is fixed, immovable, and unchangeable, a covenant to be a friend no matter what, and loyal to and committed to sharing the love that each other has a right to because you made a decision to connect together as man and wife, making you, according to the words of the scriptures, one flesh. Does that make sense? That's what it's all about, and that's what you've become, and that's what you're doing here. Now, we use the rings. Do you have the rings? We use the rings as a representation of the foreverness of... We use the ring as a symbolic representation of the foreverness of the commitment that we just talked about. Because a ring has no beginning, a ring has no end. So it's a representation of a continual thing forever and ever. Okay. So in the quiet moments, if things get a little stressy, which they will, you look at the ring and you remember the covenant that you made. You remember the covenant that you said to him and you said to her quietly and sometimes in the quiet moments where you're together, you say, I will be your friend and I will be your husband and your wife in a way that will bring happiness and peace into your life. That's the covenants that Latter-day Saints make to each other. And when you do that, the Spirit of the Lord, He promised us that when we do that, He will be with us and walk among us and help us to actually keep that covenant by teaching us how we can do it, how we can love, how we can honor, how we can find peace when it's hard, how can we can find solutions to challenging and difficult situations in peace, not in contention. He will teach you how to do that by the gift and the power of the Spirit, which He will give you because you're keeping the covenant that you made. Does that make sense? Always remember this, and you will enjoy life together forever and ever after you're sealed in the temple. Thank you. Okay. You want everybody to applaud that? or? Yeah? All right. Yes, we can now announce, you can't leave yet, you're under stress. Oh, you got to go cook? No, 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 no. Women first, then cook. All right, we'd like to now announce officially the, uh, that we're, we have Mr. and Mrs. Brill. Thank you.